What's happening, Fight Week Show fans, Fight Week Show people, there, man? Look what the cat has dragged in. We got our boy, our very own boy from SA over here, Bradley, the nightmare, Swanepoo. How you doing, my bro? Hey, thank you so much for the introduction, my man. It's good to be back. You sound better than Simon Stevens at EFC. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying, man. I'm trying. Those guys, they inspire me daily. Those guys, they, you know, they, they give us certain inspiration. And, and these are people that we look up to in the sport, man. Simon Stevens, Big Hot Soramopo, and all those guys over there. And before we get into this one, I want to wish your, your brother, Dylan, happy birthday. Dylan, the Punisher, he's just had his birthday. So I just wanted to wish him happy birthday from the Fight Week show uh, of, up over here, man. Hope he's had a fun day. Hope he's had a good one. And big up to Dylan, Thank man. Thank you so much, man. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, man. Fantastic. Fantastic. Bro, it's been a minute since since we had you on the show. And it's you you you've had you've had a little bit of a journey getting back to your most your most recent fight. But before we get there, how how has it been for you to to come back around after your last match with Igel Cabeza that we know didn't go your way, but you regrouped? And 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 you put a new coat of paint on, and you went back out there, and 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 got back up to the challenge again. But what was all of that transformation like? Resetting your mind, res, you know, resetting your 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 position, and and going back out there to 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 get back on the horse, so to say. Well, thank you for that question. Well, the, it's it's been it's been a tough journey and it's been a, a long road ahead. And uh, for me personally, I wanted to get back in there sooner. I wanted to. My goal was in the beginning of the year, like April, May, have my first fight of this year, and then by this time around, have my second fight already, like I did previously last year. Um, but these organizations work differently, and it probably just worked in my favor and uh, like. So God's hand of protection over me that I needed to have this have this break, even even though I didn't wanted to feel like it. I wanted to get in there back sooner and and quickly and to show everybody that uh, the previous fight was just a fluke and show that I'm I'm the real deal, you know. So uh, it's, yeah, it's been it's been a, a life changing experience for this few months that I haven't been in a cage, mm. and for uh, yes, man, I was aching aching and itching just to get back in there as, as quick as possible but uh yeah these eight or ten months that i haven't been in the cage as i had to recruit of who i am and what i want to be and uh and just find my my new my new hunger for the game you know the, the new the new mindset the new uh, it's, it's it's just to build up on that on that confidence again that i want to get back up there as quick as possible and uh, it will be a dream come true if I if I even have a rematch with uh, with Kamb Sir Kabisa, which mm -hmm. everybody knows. If I if I just have lay a hand on him or even wrestle with him, and you you know how good my wrestling is, and that if I just have a lay a hand on him, he will have a very tough time, and mm -hmm. everybody would like to see it. Um, I just wish I just wish uh, in my mind I was thinking that fight would go like three four rounds, and there will be a very like very a long fight, but grinding grinding out uh, fight it will be a really spectacular fight. But you know, everything everything comes for a reason. Everything is in a everything happens for a good reason. You can oh, never control happens. the outcome. You can never control anything. But you just have to keep your head up and keep on pushing. That's 100%. why this that little fluke loss that I I got out of thirty seven fights already that I have, and it's my first loss that I felt now. Mm. Uh, it told me again that i'm just i'm just human and mm. that it's it, and uh, it motivated me more to push even harder as a as a fighter and mm. to show show the world that i i will keep on fighting no matter what mm. can you still hear me yeah i can hear you yeah i can hear you lost you there for a second Sorry, but i lost you, you for a second there. <laughs> cool yeah no problem be back there yeah, so yeah I'm, that's I'm a really, back. really glad, really glad to be here. Yeah, hundred, hundred percent. And and I, I wanted to, if if you know, if you grace me with it, I wanted to ask you because you refer to this this loss 
against Igel Cabeza as a fluke. And yes. rightfully so, in terms of from your perspective, how many fights that you've had up until then that, you know, you find a way for it to go your way. You find a way for, for exactly. you to get your hands raised. And I can exactly. I can understand from your perspective and from your point of view why you see it as a fluke. But now that the dust is settled, is there anything in in that cage when you was in there with Eagle that that felt different was there something that uh maybe leading into into the fire and i'm not asking you to make excuses i i'm i, I i'm yeah. more looking for more of a reasoning than like asking yeah. you to make excuses is there anything that that felt different going into the fight was there was there different in maybe wait maybe the weight cut was bad maybe there was an injury going in or it was just his night on that night or as you said a fluke in that way there you go. <laughs> oh, <Lord>. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna talk soon, coach. We're gonna talk soon. I goes, yeah. I goes, <laughs> the All way in paradise, the Mauritius, I believe. Oh, yeah, 100%. Coach, we're gonna talk we're gonna soon. Talk to you, so to see you. Yeah, we're gonna talk to you, Mauritius. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're gonna line that up. Oh. We're definitely gonna line that up. 100%, coach. Oh. Oh my God! He was here <laughs> yeah. and he was gone. I got excited oh, when God. I saw your dad. When I saw uh, coach, I'm like, coach, coach. <laughs> I think it was quite because the the weather is was miserable and rainy today, so I don't know if that's the cause of it. No, uh, my dad did say with uh, when we did Mauritius, we will uh, some of the seminars we're giving MMA and so jujitsu seminars. Uh, we will we'll try and video call you there as well. Uh, so we'll see how the signal is, and if it's strong enough, we can we can the, we'll do a no, video no call. No problem there. at all. No problem. And then the other one is if we there's a like jujitsu tournament on the beach by mm. Mauritius. So if there's a good signal on that side. We'll also give you a video call and show you show you what's up there. <laughs> that, that would be that would be awesome, bro. That would be absolutely awesome. And yeah, my regards to Coach Morn. Um, just yeah, <laughs> that we think we think very very highly of him over here on the Fight Week show. <laughs> As you know, we, we we respect his work a lot, and uh, he's one of the reasons why you know our audience awarded him you know uh, Coach of the Year last year, and yeah. he's on the trajectory to doing the same thing again. And you know, many many congratulations to Coach on 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 the job that he got um over there. In Mauritius uh, is something that you know he's big. That's that's a huge honor. Uh, to bestow on 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 coach and you know when when your work is recognized across across the world it means you you're doing something right you're doing something in the right way <laughs> oh, yeah. and uh, oh, yeah. coach is widely recognized so congratulations thank you my man i'm i'm for me i'm it's a place beyond measure <laughs> it's so uh, it's so good to have that yeah, man. I mean, you, you're you're also embark embarking on this on this journey with him uh, over there to 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 Mauritius. Yeah. Um, just being out there with your dad, because look, I know the relationship that you and the coach has, which is also your dad, the team you have around you, the support network that you that you know that you have, and and you know. You guys are a strong family. I always, I always emphasize that whenever you hear because anybody that go and look on your page, or your or your Instagram, your stories, and see how you guys coordinate before you all go together and go to war. Yeah, it's incredible to see. It's 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 something. It's 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 something to 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 be you know to be to be to be revered. People you know when people see the bond of a family like this especially brother brothers in arms before you go to war um yeah yeah it's got it's got to have a special feeling in your heart before you it, step in there does it not the family the family bond and uh, to know that your your family's part of part of the training and it's your coach next to you it's also your dad and it's it's no way near a word to describe how amazing that that is mm. it's yeah you know, some people think like yeah it's, it's your dad and uh, your coach at the same time and maybe it'll be even more harder or stricter on you or 
more more firm with you. <laughs> but uh, it's not it's not that way. We even we have a, a special special bond with each other, very very uh, special connection bond with with each other. And uh, because we've been doing it for so many years, mm. we've really been linked. Like if you uh, uh, you so training with each other and doing pad work and rolling and it's it's just so much fun rolling rolling with your dad. Hundred <laughs> percent. I mean, we we seen the uh, the video that Graham uh, and uh, that Graham put out about you, and you know the the work that you've done from such a young age with your dad, and you know just just being around the elements of of yeah. you know MMA from from uh, you from the day you could walk really to where you are exactly. now, and and exactly. and. And here you are competing with the best, with the best athletes uh, in, in, you know, in the world. Um, I asked earlier on, just before your dad came in, um, you know, now that the dust has settled, and yeah. you could you could really see what what happened uh, in that Eagle Cabeza fight because obviously you you want a rematch. All roads, as far as you're Definitely. concerned, leads back to Eagle Cabeza if. If you were given the choice, oh, yeah. if you had a magic yeah. wand and you could make something happen again, you want to get back in there with Igel Cabeza. But in your mind, leading into that fight that you lost against him, was there any any kind of uh, maybe extra extra? Like I said, I'm not asking you to make excuses, but just yeah. a, a more a more rounded reasoning why that well, loss like come about. Like a realistic approach, or like a, was, was just like a truth behind it. What's what's going on? Yeah. Um, you know, if I, man, if this rematch could happen next month, I would take it. <laughs> mm. That's how bad I want. Um, I know, I, I know. Uh, for all the all the years of hard, hard training and all the work I put in, and I know I'm a. Um, that's all the hours of hard, hard training. I just want to have an amazing reward, like like that belt. But the, going mm. back to the question is the one thing. Well, there's a couple of things, but mm. yeah, we were we were also like on a uh, on a holiday just after that guy Moyo fight. Just so just before I had that bout, uh, the opportunity to fight for the bout, we also yeah. went on a family holiday or so, and we uh, for a week in mm. to one of the islands, and yeah. then we came back and we had to start our fight camp, and mm. that was also about a huge a huge drop from the fight mm. camp right lose so much weight and right. then uh, yeah to lose to lose so much weight and to make sure we're on the right track for for the fight yeah. so the one thing that was concerning of the uh, of the fight that we were uh, the the weight cut the weight cut wasn't so like the first time for an issue yep. uh, was, yeah the body was still it took a while it, it's always like this after a vacation you yeah. take you take some time to recover and that and get back into the groove. Now you have to yeah. now you have to be all beast mode and going a uh, uh, full fire full throttle mm. again in your training. Yeah. So uh, it's, you know, that whole concept of uh, yeah, next time we won't we won't take a vacation before before yeah. the before the fight actually happens. Yeah, but it was kind of kind of different. And then uh -huh. you know, the weight cut was an issue because yeah, man, if you if I go to uh, go to 70 and at last four kilos from 70 to 70 is, right is yeah a strong strong heavy weight cut um yeah, yeah there was the, there was the one thing and if you saw if you saw me uh, do my workouts and everything i was having a time of my life i was yeah. in, enjoying the moment uh i was enjoying that i was going for the world title mm. i was just sucking all that up all that energy up for that fight Everything was good, and because of the weight cuts, the problems with the weight cuts and that, mm. uh, that's the due because that uh, uh, that forearm strike against the neck. That's why I fell down, and right. that that was a that was a shocker. And then that's how my body just all of a sudden. Shut down. I mean, I've taken so many shots before in my life, and then that one just there, boom, and it. Uh, Got let you. me, let yep. me sit down. <laughs> Every everything yeah. makes perfect sense now because. I remember speaking to you the day before the fight. And you 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 yeah. just finished your weight cut at that, that day when I was speaking to you. And you just finished your, yeah. your weight cut, just finished your weigh-ins. And 
you was on your way back to rehydrating and we, we had like a good 10 minutes chat before before you you know b before before the fight and i could tell yeah. because i've seen i've seen you before when you've had yeah. weight cuts but i could tell that that one there got to you but in my mind i'm thinking this one is like this because you're probably taking this challenge seriously and yeah. you want to make sure you're <laughs> professional and you turn up and and make sure that you know you was on weight and and, and you did everything as a professional was required yeah. of you so you know exactly. fantastic for that one there and now you know we have we have a at least a a, a logical reason a legitimate logical reason and it's not an excuse it's just a reason and and sometimes this thing this is the fight this is the fight game this is mma it, it, things it like happens. this yeah. can happen it happens exactly okay. look at all the ufc ufc fight stars uh, even uh charles Oliveira and his volkanovsky they all they all struggle with the weight cuts and all that yeah yeah, I mean, 100%. previously, Charles, Charles's last fight or so, his whole team circled around him while he was lying down and cutting weight and a towel around him, and they all huddled up and just motivating him and he's help him uh, get through it. Yeah. yeah. If you don't, yeah. if you don't calculate your weight cut correctly and you time it correctly, at the end, bef uh, at the end, just before the fight happens, a week before, and you have to, you have to scramble just to lose five kilos or six kilos. Because you left it at the last minute, it's it's also a game changer. It's not yeah. your your performance is going to be different. It's, 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 I, I, I try I, I to explain to people so many times how important it is for a good weight cut going into a fight yeah. because one 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 bit out of weight it can change <laughs> everything in your performances. Oh, and, yeah. And you, you're true. you're living proof of that. But let's move, let's shift gears a little bit. You've now moved yeah. forward. You've reset your mind. You you know different different set of mentality. Learn from a previous mistake because now you now know what you're not doing when you're going into you know a title fight that's as important as what you're probably going to get against Igor mm -hmm. Cabeza again. And you've mm -hmm. gone in there with Robert Shimboe at one fifty five division. Right, because regularly you you yeah. you compete you compete at one forty five, but you've gone up yeah. and you've dealt with somebody like Robert Simboe. How symbolic is this fight to you, first of all, and to your mission of facing Eagle Cabeza if he still remains with the EFC? Because it kind of looks yeah. that way, and I know they've been trying to get from Ige whoever is going to stay or is going to go. From from the EFC, I'm maybe thereby making the, the 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 title vacant. But from my understanding, the title is not vacant, so that's good news for you. But you got up there yeah. and 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 dealt with uh, Robert Sambewa, Simboe, right? So now, how did it feel going in there, justifying to yourself that you can compete at at a at a weight at a weight class up and compete effectively as you did to prepare yourself for? For maybe a, a potential uh, rematch with Vigil. Well, it felt really good. Um, like I said, and you heard before that we we uh, we weren't in a game or in the cage for like eight or ten months. Uh, it was not due to our our fault or anything that we wanted to stay out that long. It's just that EFC was just taking the time, not getting not getting back to us, and then finally we had an opportunity to uh, enter again. Um, now, now that we just went up a weight class, first reason was just to feel out that how how a lightweight division feels, and to look after my health as well and not uh, drop so much of weight. Hmm. Um, you wanted to feel the power and the strength. So this whole fight camp and training camp we were in was more about explosiveness, more about power, more about uh, strength training, and to feel uh, feel that more instead of every single time for featherweights I had to do huge amounts of cardio for my for my fight camp. Uh, at this time, we had to switch things up a bit. Now we had to, we just had to build some muscle up and to regain regain our, our power back. And that's what I felt really good at. Uh, I felt really good to make sure that uh, I had my strength back the way I did and my, and my power. But uh, I'm not staying, I'm definitely not saying I'm not staying away from featherweight. Uh, I will definitely do I will definitely do another lightweight fight, but then I'm going back to featherweight and I'm finishing the mission there.
yeah, and making sure that I uh, I retain I retain my top my top spot there. Yeah. That's that's also where I belong. So uh, oh. in the near future, it's also a good a good thing to fill it out with lightweight because if we ever do go overseas and UFC or Bellator or so, and uh, we know for a fact, hey, we ha- we done lightweight before. We know how it feels. We can we can uh, we can definitely fight there as well. So it's yeah. not a unknown territory for us. So yeah. it's a really good really good space that we know. Hey, lightweight is good. Lightweight is good, and featherweight is also good. So uh, both needs both needs a really good a planning ahead how to how to cut the weights how to make sure everything goes according to plan and the mm-hmm. fight game and the fight game goes according to plan mm-hmm. for that for that division yeah i mean from the sounds of it you need the right balance between operating between both weight classes and getting a real feel for yeah you know different yeah. different layers and different power and different skill sets yeah. and how to how to wrangle all this all these fighters up there and and, and in your division. Now, we know Egil Cabeza, the champ, he just competed at 104, defeating Vince Bembe, a a fighter that you met along the way, on your way up, and put in a way in the second round, finishing him in the second round. How much confidence does he give you knowing that you can, you know, get back up in there with with Igeo, even though you know from from former opponents that you've put away that you've finished uh got in there with Igeo Cabeza for the for the title what what confidence does that draw for you does that does that fill you with at least a belief in your own skill set that what you've got in your own skill set can go and defeat somebody uh as potent as as Igeo Cabeza well, it gives me a lot of confidence that I know that he is, well, he also faced guys that I fought as well. And uh, he hasn't he hasn't seen my real skill set before. And mm. uh, yeah, it's just some things that he mentioned last time in that press conference he did in uh, the EFC that yeah. uh, I'm a keyboard warrior and uh, he's talking bad stuff with me and, uh, and things he's saying to the interview people. So that I'm, it's, yeah, that. I need to sign contracts and I need to I need to fight and stop talking and all this. But uh, uh, I don't I don't talk. I'm the I'm the one of just loving loving the passion of of the sport and training really hard. I'm definitely not a Conor McGregor. Definitely not one of these guys that talk a lot. And when I celebrate, I celebrate properly with my wins. I celebrate really really good. Yeah. And uh, for me, that's just yeah. If I get the rematch or not, it's one of my goal sets, one of my my dreams to have it again, and it will be really awesome just to shame shame what I got. If not, if it doesn't happen, it's still fine. My goal, my main goal is for that title. Main goal is for the title. Doesn't matter who. If doesn't matter who they put in front of me, I want to I want to go for the title again. So uh, it gives me motivation that how good my skill set is, and. For me, I just need to I just need to prove it to everybody. You you talk to my team here, you talk to my dad, you talk to everybody that trains with me, they will tell you what kind of amazing fighter I am and I, it's, uh, like what a beast I am on the on the mat. You know, so I just need to I just need to prove that to the world. It's like what I do in training, I should I should do it in a cage. Okay. And that mentality has to has to shift gears and definitely definitely showcase it in a cage there. Yeah, not so good for us. And uh, mm-hmm. as yeah, for family, family issues, the gym. Uh, it's just been one of it's, it's it's just one of those years. It's just one of those years that's not not uh, uh, yeah, it's not one of the good years. So aw- awesome to know that we can we can end on uh, end on a high note, and it's really really good to do that. And then by next year, we put a goal set out. Uh, that we we were we were we were hunt for that belt. We were hunt for that belt definitely. I can't wait for that. If he wanted us to fight for the belt this uh, now end of the month or sorry end of the year, but uh, we want to we want to uh, make sure that uh, we are ready for it and get at least two or three more fights in before we go before we go for the belt again. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Okay, I mean, like you said, you're you're open. From what I can take from that, you're open and you'd love to fight Egil Cabeza. But if not, it don't matter who they've got, who they put in front of you for the vacant 
uh, featherweight title, you, you'll be down yeah. for it. But for now, you're just going to go 155, have one more fight over there and 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 just just end the year on a on a, on a on a high note because of the sort of year that you've had and and I understand yeah. it you know within the camp within teammates within within you know within the gym and 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 everything else that's going on with it so that, that that's that's yeah. totally understandable and we get we get where you're coming from on that one and um you know hopefully you do you know you do all all your teammates include a shout out yeah. to TK Tapiwa Katikati um Dylan um shout out to all those guys that's you know that's your teammate uh big 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 up to all those guys man i know uh tapiwa has got a fight coming up as well shout out to him uh and hopefully uh we get to we get to bring him in uh uh before you know before 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 he fights up and and have a discussion with him um now there there's a lot going on in 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 the ufc Right, I, I just wanted to shift gears with you a little bit and just talk about the landscape of of MMA uh, with you, and and just get your opinions on one or two things uh, that's been that's been going on. Um, we just seen uh, Aljamain Sterling and 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 Sean uh, Sugar Sean uh, Sugar Sean O'Malley, and the way that fight ended, and the build, even the build up to the to the whole fight. What did you make of it? What did you make of? O'Malley's path to the top. Do you think it was fast tracked, or do you think uh, he, he's, he, he was it was it was legitimately he, he got there legitimately? And do you think he's going to be a good champion and a and 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 a, and one and a champion that's good for the UFC? Like there, for example, O'Malley O'Malley also had a he also had a tough road to the the title. I think mm. now. I didn't see his record, but he's about seven or eight fights. Mm. Seven or eight fights. He's also on his way to the uh, to the title. He had one or two losses as well, and then he had now a good winning streak of three, four fights, and that's why they gave him the the title fight as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he, he he went through some buckles and some 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 roadblocks to his for his journey up to the title, mm -hmm. and he he deserves it. He deserves it. If you if you six, seven, eight fights and you have a really good record and you keep pursuing like pursuing your dreams and uh, keep pushing forward, I think that, that was legit. That was a legit call that uh, he was he was next for the belt. I definitely I definitely think so. Um, I just think because Aljo maybe had a chip on his shoulder, maybe he had uh, under underestimating O'Malley that um, he probably thought that he wasn't. He wasn't ready for the bout yet, and maybe he didn't took his uh, his training seriously uh, or uh, enough that he knows that O'Malley was a threat to him. Yeah. Um, but everybody thought that uh, so Aljo was just going to take him down to the ground and sub submit him. Yeah. And then uh, I saw some tweets and the reactions about that, and yeah, one you see it can happen to anybody. One heavy shot like that, you take your eyes off the target, and boom, just boom. just like that, fight's yeah. over. But the way Aljo carried himself after and before the fight, uh, it was really good. He was still, even what impressed me a lot was after the fight. He still yeah. carried himself as a champion. He still carried yeah. himself as as a as a true martial artist. He didn't yeah. didn't uh, say anything or anything bad or, or everything was all respect yeah. from there. Yeah, man. We 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 love that. We love that, and you know. When you when you say you know after a loss or after a win and and you get on the mic and everything happens with you know we we see the respect there between him and 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 Sean right there at the end um, there was some rumblings and complaints that the 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 referee must have stopped the fight a little bit too early they you know a lot of people are calling early stoppage. But from what I could see, because Aljo said he was rolling and you know he was trying to try and defend himself and 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 get out of the way. But when I was watching it live, um, I could see Aljo taking a lot of un unanswered shots while he was down there. Yeah. And from a fighter exactly. like like Sugar Sean O'Malley, who's very very precise with his shots, um, it was always going to finish the fight. Do you think it was an early stoppage, yeah. or do you think Magoda did? you know what he was supposed to do and 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 save the fighter 
from from more yeah. damage than than it should be taken. Well, first of all, I think for Aldo's point of view, if he if he thinks it was an early stoppage, he should have when he landed on the ground. He should have maybe threw an up kick or he's trying to get you on his hands and knees <clears throat> and stand back up again. You can't yeah. line your back and put your feet up like that and trying to, to trying to uh, fight from there and, and say I'm still I'm still in the game, you know. Mm. And then by Mali's point of view, he landed a very nice strong right cross to mm. get him down to the ground. Yeah. And when Aljo went down to the ground, he landed another right right cross to his to his head mm. when he was down. And Aljo was just, yeah, the feet were up, the hands were up. But you get my point of view that, that Aljo, if he wanted to keep on fighting, he needed to try whatever he could, stand back up. Stand mm. back up or try, uh, try uh, throw some kicks towards uh, uh, Sugar. Because you can't, you, can't throw, you can't throw kicks when you just got knocked out or like a heavy, uh, like a heavy blow. So if you throw kicks to your partner's head, uh, it's a... It's a really, it's a really good indication that hey, you're not, you're not out, or you're not unconscious, or so you're still in the game. I think the referee will still, yeah, you know, let it go and and keep the fight going. Um, so yeah, I think my point of view, if that ever could happen, the fight would keep on going. But luckily for Sean O'Malley, if he saw Aljo was still squirming and and moving around, he threw another. I think it was one or two shots at the. So, so on the ground, and then the fight stopped. Yeah, I think uh, it wasn't wasn't an early stoppage. Uh, if Aljo wanted to do something else, he needed he needed to stand back up or show that he was still in the fight. Yeah, that, that, I agree with you. I didn't think it was an early stoppage. I seen taking a lot of an answer shots, um, and and from a striker like like Sugar Sean, just just hitting like that and dropping bombs like that. Uh, I, I think the ref because the ref's job is difficult enough. Um, you yeah. know. His job is already hard enough, let alone allowing late stoppages or early stoppages. It's hard to kind of determine what's late, what's early. At the end of the day, that's to the referee's discretion. He's the one that's in there and he's the one that can see it and, you know, ultimately he's made that decision. Um, so, you know, I, I think it was a good stoppage from, from, from my point of view. Now you were talking about respect and, 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 and you know, what comes from respect after, after winning a fight. I've, I've gotten, I've spoken to a lot of people about this, including people like, you know, Hotso Ramopo and, and uh, the likes of G Gift Walker, uh, the, the, the likes of Bafana from, from Combat Cage, Combat Cave. Shout out to those guys uh, over there uh, in, in SA. Um, but I wanted to get your take, your personal take on this, because this is somebody that's familiar with you, comes from your promotion in Dracos Duplessis, uh, and yeah. he had a fantastic, fantastic fight with Robert Whittaker, which a lot oh, of people yeah. going into this fight counted him out. They did not think he could pull it off. We did a video on, on, on how Dracos was going to do this, because, you know, we, we know what he's capable of, and we know how, how much of a good fighter, and how tough, especially how tough, and how how much... <laughs> How much dog he has in him, you know what I mean? Like he's always willing to 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 put it all on the line to to get the to get the results. But the way that he, he, he went about, uh, you know, fighting Robert Whitaker, the place he going to put someone like Robert Whitaker away after being given no chance by by almost everyone that's in the UFC. Because I, I checked out the 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 roster, twenty five fighters picked. Robert Whitaker to 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 beat the place. Nobody, wow. not one, picked the place. one, not one. Woo. I'll send you the link to that video later. Not one. <laughs> How good must that be when you when you see if you if you drink us, if you see that and there's zero against you and twenty five to uh, to Robert and you go and showcase everybody. Hey, wow! I just knocked out Robert. Re <laughs> yeah, Whitaker. <laughs> yes, yeah, that was so good. I mean, the whole build up to the fight, uh, I mean, he's a really good fighter, my man. Yes, he's like he's someone I also look up to. He's a really, really good role model for SA MMA. And uh, he's, he's just putting in the time and effort. Everything, it's, everything that he's fighting and doing for his, it's, it's showing. It's showing. Definitely showing. Um, like you said, the dog mentality, his, uh, his mental game, his physical game, is all on point. I mean, they also had a, a concern about his his oxygen levels and every uh, and all that, and his eight percent in one nostril and all that stuff. 
look how look how amazing he just fought against Whitaker. Mm. Look how amazing he just fought against there. And if you have that eight percent oxygen or so, and he still had and he still gave amazing performances with his fights, and he still had uh, fights of the night performances with his other fights, I don't think why people should should always always uh, complain about you know. But you know, people will always find a way to uh, talk about something negative about a fighter. Mm. But a fighter, if you know behind the scenes, we'll always give our best. We'll always, we'll always push hard. We'll always, we'll always grind, no matter what. And uh, he's showing, he's showing a, a high level of MMA and always showing a line, line heart. Um, it's, it's really good. It's really good to see how far, how far Drikus is actually going. Uh, I can't wait for him to actually get that belt, that UFC belt. Hundred <laughs> percent. As you as you can tell, behind me, it's it's gonna be facing my countryman, my boy, <laughs> Easy. Yeah, easy right Addison. there. <laughs> yeah, Easy Addison. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I'm a I'm a big big fan of his. I've been, you know, he's my, he's my one is my countryman too. I like his style. I like the way uh that that he approaches the fight game. Uh, in, yeah. in, in the in the in the uh in the UFC. Now, what I've not been a fan of lately is the feud that he's created between him and 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 Dricos the Placey. Uh and and what was you know what was said originally back to you know what he think was said and how he yeah. took it and how he interpreted it to what we have now everybody heard what was said before everybody heard what yeah. it got twisted into and everybody is now seeing what it's now becoming you know I, I spoke to uh Hotso Ramopo about this as well and um you know, for me, the 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 activity that took place in the octagon afterwards, uh, when Easy went to went went to speak to du, Duplacy, I, I find I find it distasteful. That, that's my exact word for it. I I, I yeah. do not like it. Yeah. But at the same time, it's the fight game. And you know, listening to Dana White straight after the the conference when they were asking what did they make of all that craziness uh, that happened in yeah. the cage. <laughs> and he, you know, his words. Who gives a shit? <laughs> That's what Dana White. <laughs> That's Dana White. Then Dana White's like, huh? Nothing happened there. He's like, nothing's, nothing's. Uh, Ex exactly. Yeah, that, he didn't make a big fuss about it. <laughs> exactly that. Uh, because said, I don't, said, I don't, con I do not condone that one bit. I do not accept it. And I didn't, I, you know, I didn't understand yeah. why, you know, why that, that, you know, why that, that took place. Uh, in your, in your opinion. In your opinion, that incident that happened right there, and what it's forming into, um, how how is how have you seen it? What's your take on it? And how is the the how how are South Africans in general uh, taking it? Well, as for me, I think it's you sh you you're taking you're taking the shine away from the champ or actually the person that just won the fight. Uh, you're taking his shine and his celebration away by just stepping in there and uh, uh, he's taking his celebrations away. And usually, I agree with what like Juka said as well the other day. Uh, usually, it's the challenger that comes in the cage and challenges the champ and then uh, makes a big scene like that. But now the champion comes in the cage and starts starts uh, uh, like a huge record and, and, pro and protesting there in the cage. Uh, it's, yeah, it's you see, the fight game is also a lot of smack talking, and it's uh, some drama and politics, and all this, all this uh, interlinks with each other for for the fight game. Mm. Uh, maybe, maybe he's trying to hype the the fights up that uh, he's putting pressure on Drikas just to accept the fight and fight as soon as possible. Um, I know Adesanya is now fighting next month, but I don't know if it's going to happen this year or the end of the year. They're going to fight for the belt. Mm. There's, there's been a lot of talks about it, but I think only they're going to fight next year, beginning of next year. And uh, it goes back to the essence of martial arts that it has to be respectful and and disciplined. And uh, remember, there's so much there's so much youngsters watching watching this. If they if they start seeing that over and over again, what Adesanya start, started doing, they everybody else is going to start start acting like him and or be or be gangster or anything like that. It's um, also worth it's also worth noting, um, and I know you know there's been a lot of war under the bridge, but it's also worth noting that since then, Adesanya has come out, 
publicly and apologize to Dracos for the way that he behaved. Oh wow! Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it has. Yeah. And Easy doesn't do that, but I think he said it was wrong for the way he behaved towards Dracos. So a lot of people might not have heard that, but yeah, he definitely has made a public apology towards Dracos. Okay, that's you can probably accept that. <laughs> <laughs> You probably had one of the, uh, a couple of drinks before you came in the cage there. <laughs> that's why. That's, 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 that's what a lot of people were saying. That's, yeah, that's what a lot of people were saying. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it looked like he was drunk when when you know when he stepped in there. Uh, even yeah, though there was even though there was a video of him way 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 before of him yeah. saying, "I see myself going into the cage." And saying this over and over and over and over and over to Dracos. He had a video that he did way, 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 way before that this was going yeah. to happen. Um, so yeah. I don't know how you explain that. He's, he's, he's one yeah. of those guys. He's, he's just one yeah. of those guys. I don't I, I don't know how his mind works. His mind works in all <laughs> kind of crazy, mysterious ways. But, um, <laughs> but look, I, I, it's, it's, like I said earlier on, I do not condone what he did and and... And I find it distasteful, but it's you know win, lose or draw. Uh, easy, easy. Somebody that you know that 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 I, that I fuck with like that. I never turn my back on my countryman. And when that fight comes up, uh, when it happens, because I also ride with Rickos, I, 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 you know, I, the whole of CIT, all those guys are CIT. Yako Duplacy, Cameron, and and Rickos himself, mm -hmm. and, and Coach Mon Visor. Uh, you know, we, yeah. we have good relationship with those guys. And, um, you know, it'll be very, very good to, to just sit down on a neutral basis and just enjoy the fight for once, you know. Uh, I don't know how neutral I'm going to be. Uh, I know my heart is going to be going like this when yeah. comes, uh, <laughs> on, on, the, on the day that happens. <laughs> I understand. But, yeah, let, let, let me ask you, let me ask you one more thing uh, yeah. about, about uh, this. This one is something that's happening with your promotion, uh, EFC 107. And we 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 again we've got very very good relationship with you know those guys from the house of Tinkerbell and 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 uh, uh, and and even Terence Balello and his team. Those two guys yeah. are now fighting for the you know for the flyweight world champ world championship uh, with the EFC. Um, what are your thoughts of those two guys? As maybe you've seen, you've heard of them. You've seen them. Uh, well, you're, maybe you've had interactions with them when you've been on the on the cut together, or even just merely watching them on the uh, on the screens and stuff. What what's yeah. your perception of these two guys, and 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 what do you think uh, of you know EFC really putting these two guys together for a flyweight title fight? Well, these two flyweight guys do they do pack a punch. They are even doesn't matter how small they look, they do pack a punch and they will, they will bring it on for the night. Um, I think, I think, uh, well, I haven't met with Terence yet. I think maybe one of, one of my fights I saw, I saw him there. I never interacted or talked to him before, but mm -hmm. the gift I have, I have uh, um, some, well, I did some conferences with him and I, I talked, uh, I talked to him a couple of times and he's, yeah. a, he's a really good guy. He's a yeah. friendly guy. I think I think from my perspective he's he's training really hard and uh, yeah I think for this for this fight is going to be a really tough fight it's a really tough fight both guys are well well rounded and I know for first round I think they're going to stand stand and bang each other yeah um, I think for first if they if uh, yeah it's a hard prediction any time in a title fight any yeah. little slip up someone someone can get caught. So I just wish both guys, both guys, well, uh, it's a good training and uh, all the best for their title fight. And they must give it their all. And they must just, they must just, uh, how bad you want it at the end of the night. And the first, first flyweight champ will be crowned in a long, long time. Yeah. And there will be a really good, spectacular moment for both of them. 100%. Uh, yeah. So I can't wait for that fight. 100%. I mean, to follow in the footsteps of, of you know, uh, legends like uh, Luthando Biko, it's not, it's not a small, it's not a small shoot to fill, you know, it's a, it's, those are big boots to fill following somebody cool. like Luthando Biko. Yeah. And Zulu Boy was also a former champ there as well, so it's big names. 
big names, big names, big names. definitely big names to be to be rubbing shoulders with. And um, look, we we're expecting we're expecting fireworks uh, on the on the seventh of uh, September, and we know two days after that uh, is is UFC two ninety three in in Sydney, Australia. So that fight week, even the whole month of September, is is full of killer fights. Uh, that's going to be coming up but you you have a very very important mission with coach with your dad over there in mauritius yeah. and um Can't we're wait. wishing you good luck with all of your endeavors over there and we're going to be keeping an eye on what you're doing over there we're going to be reposting some of the things and activities that you got going on over there and we've got a plan interview uh, with your dad as well depending on signal and 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 you know everything else all the conditions that goes with it uh to to, to making an interview happen so we're definitely definitely looking yeah. forward to it we 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 i'm so i'm so excited to see you know what you guys got <laughs> going on over there and what you what you're going to bring to the cage um towards the end of the year we're going to love to see you back in the cage very very soon and um yeah man anybody you want to shout out your sponsors your team your coach the floor is yours my brother Thank you so much, my man. I really appreciate this time and, and uh, having me on the show again. I uh, just want to shout out to my dad and my, and my brother and my family. Thank you so much for being there for me and uh, especially my dad for this whole year and always being there. We will, we will get to the top again. And for my sponsors and uh, Sports RX, Bad Boy, uh, even more sponsors coming on, coming on board. And uh, yeah, the floor is always open for you guys to come on board and, and uh, Help me on this journey here to become a world champion. <laughs> but thank you for that. Uh, for, yeah, for those two sponsors, always having my back, uh, always getting the right nutrients, and always, always uh, clothes very, very well. Uh, yeah, like a pro athlete. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, thank you for my team for always, always pushing me hard. And uh, I can't wait. I can't wait for November month to, to step back in there again. And looking so forward to our so much. Yeah, my first time trip overseas for for Mauritius. Yeah, I can't wait. It's going to be one hell of a ride. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, man, I'm 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 really really excited to to see what you guys are going to do over there, and um, when you get back, and uh, we look forward to seeing you back in the cage. Thank you so much for your time. I mean, you've given us fifty minutes. We only asked for. Oof, little 20 minutes but you're always generous <laughs> with your time with the fight week show and i love it i love the way you know you're you're, you're so so kind with your time with with with, with the fight week show man uh, maximum maximum respect to you and um hopefully you know we're gonna stay in touch and we're gonna be talking yeah. uh we're gonna be talking the fight again very very soon up until there people thank you we're signing off we're out up until the next video talk soon thank you so much Hey guys, this is John Anik from the UFC. You're watching the Fight Week Show. Please subscribe, not now, but right now. Subscribe to the Fight Week Show. We'll see you guys on the road soon.